Friends, we're gathered together in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who rose from the dead, be with you always. In the waters of baptism, Francis died with Christ Jesus and rose with him to newness of life. May she now share with him eternal glory. On that same day of her baptism, Frances clothed herself in Christ. When the Lord comes again, may she be clothed in glory. My brothers and sisters, we have come together to renew our trust in Christ, who by dying on the cross has freed us from eternal death, and by rising has opened for us the gates of heaven. Let us pray for our sister that she may share in Christ's victory, and let us pray for ourselves that the Lord may grant us the gift of loving consolation. God of the living and of the dead, listen favorably to our prayers. Strengthen our belief that your son who has risen from the dead is our hope that your servant Francis will also rise again. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs, which God worked through him in your midst as you yourselves know. This man delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me, with him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Therefore, my heart has been glad and my tongue has exalted. My flesh, too, will dwell in hope. Because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him, that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus, of this we are all witnesses, exalted at the right hand of God. He received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth, as you see and hear. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? He replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people. How our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, how slow of heart to believe all that the prophet spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went and stayed with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened and they recognized him. But he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures for us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those who were with them, saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Those disciples walking along the road to Emmaus were kind of right on the razor's edge. They had spent time, clearly, walking with Jesus, listening to him, learning from him, and being day by day convinced even more that he was the Messiah. But their image of who the Messiah would be wasn't really accurate. So when Jesus went to the cross, their faith got shaken. It didn't disappear, but it was pretty thin. And they didn't know what to do. And their instinct was to walk away. So they left the holy city of Jerusalem, going toward that small town of Emmaus. But they hadn't quite given up. And Jesus, in his love, entered into their midst. 
But they were so focused on this tension that was in their lives that they couldn't recognize. But there was something in what he taught them early on about kindness and hospitality that they looked at him and said, why don't you stay with us the night? And he stayed with them. And in that simple action of breaking bread, something we as Catholics do every Sunday together, in that action, all of a sudden they could see him for who he truly was. I'm fully convinced that each of us throughout our lives have times and moments where our faith can get a little shaky. And that same Jesus who was there for those disciples on the road to Emmaus is there for us. And sometimes it's hard for our eyes to perceive his presence. We all know we can feel it in the breaking of bread at Mass. But there are other ways we can feel it as well. For you all, I am sure one of those ways was in the love of a mother and a grandmother and a friend who cared for you, who reached out to you with compassion, who made Christ present for you. And on occasion, I guess, who even drank a few with you. That's a good thing. Because one of the things that we're always reminded of is that we are all parts of the body of Christ. We all have worth and importance. And part of that reality is that when we offer love and compassion to one another, we make Christ present to one another, much in the same way as he was made present in the breaking of bread. I invite you, if you would, for this last part, please rise. My dear brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father, where he intercedes for all of us. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust, we join our prayers to his. In baptism, Francis received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead her over the waters of death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our sister was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome her into the halls of the heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. We pray to the Lord. Many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins against your love and gather them to the eternal kingdom of peace. We pray to the Lord. Those who trust in the Lord now should sleep in the Lord. Give them refreshment, rest, and peace to all those whose faith is known to you alone. We pray to the Lord. The family and friends of Francis seek comfort and consolation. Heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. We pray to the Lord. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our sister Francis. Strengthen our hope that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. We pray to the Lord. Lord God, giver of peace and and healer of souls. Hear the prayers of the Redeemer Jesus Christ and the voice of your people, whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Friends, now together let us pray using the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Friends, before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope that one day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Father of mercies, we commend our sister Frances in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon her in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant. And help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith. Until we all meet in Christ and are with you and our sister forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Almighty and ever-living God, in you we place our trust and hope. In you the dead whose bodies were temples of the Spirit find everlasting peace. As we take leave of our sister, give our hearts peace in the firm hope that one day Francis will live in the mansion you have prepared for her in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, because God has chosen to call our sister from this life to himself, we commit her to the earth, for we are dust, and unto dust we shall return. But the Lord Jesus Christ will change our mortal bodies to be like his own in glory, for he is risen, the firstborn from the dead. So let us now commend our sister to the Lord, that the Lord may embrace her in peace and raise her on the last day. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord. May she rest in peace. And may her soul and all the souls of the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. And may the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds and the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.
Thank you.